So now we're going to have a quick look at graphs and um, what you need to know about them. So if this will work, yep, there we go. So these are the key graphs that you need to know for the A-level maths exams. Um, obviously you need to know a straight line graph. Be worried if you didn't know what that looked by now. Um, you need to know what a quadratic graph looks like. You need to know what a cubic graph looks like. And you need to know what a reciprocal graph looks like. And you should just be able to identify these and know what the equation of each of them is. Also note that another type of cubic graph would be it coming up, back down again, and then going back up. So kind of having a maximum and a minimum point. But it's the same type of graph. It'll just have a slightly different equation. <clears throat> so for a linear, I have the equation y equals mx plus c. For this quadratic one in particular, it's got y equals ax squared plus c. It doesn't have an individual x term because if it had an individual x term, it would be shifted left or right. Um, the cubic graph, this one's just y equals ax cubed because it goes straight through the origin. And this reciprocal is y equals 1 over x. You also need to know how um, graphs are transformed. So if you take this um, x squared graph, and if you do um, f of zx, so um, changing from what it looks like here to f of zx, this means it will shrink, um, like contract along the x-axis, so it gets a lot narrower. And you can check whatever something looks like by just subbing in zx instead of x. So this equation here is slightly wrong. It should be um, a brackets zx squared plus b brackets zx plus c. And if you plug the numbers in, then you'll see how things come out at different points and you can see that it shrank. The next one's z times f of x. Now this one's a little more simple. You're literally times in the whole equation by z, which means the entire thing is going to get larger and it's going to stretch along the y-axis. Um, if you do f of x plus z, then you move it to the left by a distance z. Um, and again, you can check this by subbing in um, x plus z instead of x into the equation and then checking where your um, x graph, uh, sorry, your x squared graph crosses the x-axis. And you'll see each time the um, intersection points will have moved along to the left by a distance z. I don't know why I'm moving my hands, can't really see that. But anyway, you get the idea. Um, if it's x minus z, then instead of moving to the left by z, it will move to the right by z instead. So just a reminder of what the original graph looks like. And then if you do f of x plus z, then it moves up by a distance z. So you're just adding z onto it. So the only term that will change by adding z onto it will be this term and sees the intersection point. So it moves up by z, it goes from intersecting at c to intersecting at c plus z. So they're the important graph transformations, and this is a quick summary of all of them. So f of x plus a, move the graph up and down by a units. So in this case, it's a plus sign. So it moves up. If it was a minus sign, it would move down. So a times f of x stretches the graph in the y-axis by a scale factor of a f of x plus a moves the left by the units a and f of ax stretches the graph in the x-axis by scale factor 1 over a so it's going to um, shrink by a factor of a. So that's everything and um, if you've got any more questions about it, then again just put it in the comments and um, if there's anything that's not made clear or you want to see an example then put it in the comments or message me and if you want, if you look at my other videos and there's something that isn't there that you want to explain, then just contact me and I'll try and put one up.